So the first shot we have here was shot with a phantom and I believe this was D log or one of the logs that the phantom shoots. We're gonna wanna try to do here is, well, first we have to get some of this detail and get this washed out look. Uh, up here we have a little bit of, it looks like it's blown out up there. Everywhere else looks fine. It looks like there's a water spot over here. First of all, we're gonna wanna take all of this and spread it out. A lot of people just use contrast to do this. Um, I mean, it sort of works, but what ends up happening is this is significantly like crushed. Um, everything else looks fine, but that looks really dark. And that's not really what I want um, starting here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Alt. And what that does is it allows you to snap to the line um, at center point. So what I'm gonna do is just put it down here just so I leave the everything that's in the shadows area alone. And I'll pull this down just a bit and then raise this. And we're just stretching this out, if you've seen before. And we're just stretching it out. So now we have all of that spread out and the luminance value spread out. Okay, so now it looks like this is looking kind of flat up here. I guess the next thing that we would want to do is add saturation. And adding saturation, it looks like this got really saturated. Same with over here, the road. But up here, it's still pretty gray. And I want to, I want that to, um, I want it to, I want those clouds to pop a bit more. I want it to be a little more dramatic. So what we're going to do is we're just going to reset that color. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the power window these are referred to as. And the one I picked was a gradient. And I'm just going to add a little gradient in here and I'll show you here what it does in a sec. So everything that isn't gray, I mean, the, this is a little gray, but if there was color, it would be all color. Anything that isn't this gray will be affected by anything I do in this node now. So first thing I want to do, pull apart the the uh, data that we have here for the shadows. And I'm gonna do that by using contrast. So I'm gonna move the contrast, but everything is going up because it's it's just using all of the parameters here. So what, I'm, what I actually wanna do is I wanna use pivot and that will move where the midpoint is. And I can pull that down a bit. So now we have some dramatic looking shadows. This was before we did it. Now that's after. One thing that I do want to do here quick, oops, is I want to move this up just a tad. Okay. All right. So now we have dramatic shot or dramatic clouds. What I think I want to do next is color those clouds. So let's get started. Start adding in some blue here. Okay. Add a little bit more in down here. Okay, that's looking real good. Try to make sure that the whites stay white. Okay, so before, after. Now let's play this through. Take a look at that. Got pretty dramatic shadows. Um, the rest of the frame still needs a little bit of work, but we have that first part. Okay. So now we have that. What I wanna do next is I'm gonna add a parallel node and you use Alt P to add a parallel node. And what that does is <clears throat> this node, you know, you'd set your adjustments and you set your adjustments on here. And then this parallel mixer will take both of those and blend them together. That's a little bit different than layers because layers don't blend one from the other. They stack on top of each other. Um, so whichever is the top layer obviously doesn't blend with the others. Okay, so now I want to add some saturation to the rest of the frame. So I'm going to add some saturation here to the rest of this frame. And that is looking pretty good. Just like that. There's a water spot over here and it looks like I can see propellers up here, but yeah, it's okay. All right, 
So there's a couple of other little things that you can do. You can take out this uh, the greenish hue that's over here. So if I wanted to, I could add another one. And I could take this greenish hue out of here and I would do that with hue versus hue. And this is gonna be more yellow than green. But there we go. Take some of that out. We'll make these a little wider so we affect more of that stuff. Okay before after all right all right yeah so I guess one last thing I could do is at the end here that's oh to uh, if you have this zoomed in and you moved it around it's shift Z to get it centered again um, one last thing I want to do is just fine tune my darks and my brights. So I'm using um, over here the shadow control and the highlight control, just moving them around a little bit. Okay. All right, and then that shot. So we have uh, before. And it's log, so you know it's going to be a pretty significant change. But the cool thing is, is uh, using the power window to affect just that area up there, the sky. And you might notice that when you turn it on and off, it's really noticeable, and don't really be concerned with that because no one will ever see it flickering back and forth to notice that. So nine times out of ten. The way that this is is perfectly fine and with this stuff being out into the distance you're gonna have a little bit of atmosphere um, that's going to adjust those and and, and uh, turn turn some of that stuff blue so there's that shot now let's move to the next one and the next shot we have here this one was shot pretty well um the big thing that I want to do with this is I want to get these couple of little clouds even though there's not much in this shot here but get those to pop so I want to make that sky uh, a bit richer uh, but for the most part I always leave the first first one is always my levels then my next one I get into the actual color so for this one what I'm going to do is Hoover saturation and I'm going to get the two blue points and we're just going to bring up the saturation in those blues. So something like that. So very little and a bit more. And I can also pull the saturation up a little bit overall for the whole thing. That's looking pretty good. Now the next thing that I want to do is we're going to add another parallel node. But I want this to feel like it's autumn. So what I'm gonna do is, there's a couple of trees in here. I'm guessing they're a different species because they're just a little tint different. I'm just gonna use hue versus hue and change those. To be a little more yellow, okay. emphasize that a bit more and this just looks really bad because it's uh we're so close okay so now if we come out <clears throat> and look at that we can see that we're starting to add that yellow i want to go in and do it a little bit more make it a little more significant okay let's go into Hue versus hue, and we'll stretch these out just a little bit so we get more of that tree in there. Okay. And then saturation, we're gonna do the same. Pull these out a little bit. And we can bring that up just a tad. And open these up just a little bit as well. Bring that down just a little bit. Get to be a little richer. Okay. So now we're starting to get that autumn feel. But one thing you'll notice <clears throat> is where the cows are eating, 
that also affect it down there as well. You see these little spots here? Affected these spots too because they're also the same color. So what we're gonna do is we are going to just use this or just uh, affect that tree line. So a power window right over the tree line. And we'll try to get this up a little closer to it. And we'll just do the whole thing. So now we're not affecting this area anymore. And it's just the trees. Okay. So we'll play that. The trees look like it's, you know, getting close closer to autumn and you know the leaves are starting to change you could go in and do this more make it more significant but that's just a really quick way instead of having to pick you know colors and qualify it and all of that you can just take one color value switch it to another color value boost up the saturation so it looks a bit more like we can do there actually what we'll do is just go after everything throw a little color boost in there greens are getting a little little crazy but yeah so there we go adding a power window to limit the effects and these two shots didn't have any um tr like tracking wasn't needed but if you need it to track something power window you have selected and then you would be able to just come into here and track it so that's how you use power windows with the other tools to limit the location in which you're affecting for that particular layer. Again, my name's JR and I'll see you when I see you. Wow. Hmm.